So I've had this dust collector in the shop for a little over six months now, and I've been getting a lot of questions about the dust collector, how it's been performing, what my thoughts are now that I've had it for a while, um, et cetera, et cetera. It must be like spring new dust collector time or something. because <laughs> It seems like everybody's really interested in this. So I thought I'd share a little bit about the experiences that I've had so far with the collector over the last, uh, what, like eight months or so that I've had it. And I also have a few things I want to do to kind of improve things in this area of the shop. So I thought I'd include those in this video as well. So this is the Laguna 3 horsepower C-Flex Compact Mobile Cyclone. <laughs> uh, it has been fantastic to have a machine that's actually sized correctly for my shop. Uh, in the shop, pulling the sawdust out of my tools. It's just been just a night and day difference compared to how much uh, sawdust and chips and stuff gets either left in the machine, in the tubes, or you know thrown out of the machine because the collector couldn't handle the amount of chips and things coming out of the machines, especially on the planer. My old collector really couldn't really, couldn't really keep up that well with the planer. You would see a lot of stuff shooting at the front of the planer and not all of it being sucked up into the collection system. With something like this is actually big enough for this shop and the tools that I have don't really have that problem anymore. So at least things are slightly cleaner and it just feels a lot better to be in here with the number of sawdust piles not being so ridiculously big. <laughs> so strictly from a performance standpoint, this machine or any machine that can pull this amount of airflow is a fantastic upgrade. I definitely recommend um, actually taking the time to just realize the amount of airflow you actually need in your shop. My shop is a two car garage. I had, or I still do have the six inch ducting from the collector to the tools and the longest run is probably from the dust collector to the jointer and that's going to be uh, 10 feet, another about 10 here, 20, 25 feet or so of uh, pipe with about five feet of um, flex hose attached to that. That's going to the jointer. That's my longest run and my old collector didn't really have enough power to actually pull enough air through the collection system to pull all the chips out of the jointer. The jointer was something that got clogged up pretty often and I had to kind of address that. So just to give you some ideas, if you have a similar size shop, you're probably not going to be all that happy with something under two horsepower or even two horsepower probably. You're probably looking at something more in the three horsepower range anyway. So as far as the performance on this particular machine, one thing I noted in the setup video that I had posted was that the separation on this thing is not really all that great. And if you didn't see my shop update, like I think a week or two after I posted that video, they do have a restrictor plate that gets installed between the cone and the collection drum, which I guess changes the air, something with the air inside of there, which causes the chips to drop into the drum instead of being brought through the uh, impeller into the filter as much. So it did help quite a bit. I don't have the large chips that I saw entering the, uh, the filter anymore, which is a really nice change. Now, as far as overall separation goes, the big filter or the big particles don't make it to the filter anymore, but the fines still do. Uh, a lot of the fine dust does make it into the filter and the filter does need to be cleaned fairly often. Now, if you're like me and you came from a, like a, like a bag unit where you have the filter up top that always is clogged anyway and you gotta beat the crap out of the thing all the time, this really is not that bad. You just come over here and hit the little paddles and I do a decent job of knocking the dust off of the filter but there is a significant amount of dust that ends up in the actual collection bag. So if I take this thing off, this is about five drums worth. So I've filled this drum about five times and this is how much stuff ends up in the filter. And this is just what I've been able to dislodge. So I guess I could dump this out, but you could probably tell that there's a, a pretty good amount of fine dust in this bag. I'll dump it out and then run away. There's a pile of cancer on the floor. So that's probably a few gallons worth of sawdust. A lot of really, really fine stuff. There are some chips in here, but not a whole lot. This is just super ridiculously fine dust. So that kind of brings me to the question I've been getting quite a lot, which is what I buy this again and what I recommend it to other people. Uh, there is a very specific person that this is probably the best fit for, and that is gonna be someone like me who has very limited ceiling height. You kind of trade off the separation ability of the cyclone for the shorter height 
allows you to fit it into a much lower ceiling space than you would a full-size cyclone. So that being said, if you're looking at the three horsepower model, uh, either this one, the C-Flux, or even the P-Flux, you're getting really close or at least the same amount of money as a full-size cyclone. So if you don't have a limited ceiling height, you might as well just get a full-size cyclone to have much better performance and uh, maybe it might even be cheaper depending on the brands. I'm not too familiar with all the brands out there. But for instance, this model here, I, I got it for $1,800 and that was when they had a 10% discount thing going on. So essentially shipping was free. Otherwise, this would run you about $2,000 delivered, I guess, you know, depending on tax and shipping and where you're at and everything. And then the, the nicer one with more features, I guess, is the P-Flex, and that one is MSRP of $2,500, something around that range. So really, if you're looking at the full-size Cyclones, they're going to be right around that same price anyway. So I don't know. I don't really see much reason to buy a compact Cyclone if you have another foot of ceiling height, for instance. So I just dumped out the bin and the area down here where the wheels attach uh, is one of the things I need to improve. I don't think that they were intending this thing to be dragged across the lawn to be dumped out like I'm doing. <laughs> but rolling this across the floor uh, on concrete or whatever in a shop, this is probably not going to be an issue. But because I'm wheeling this thing over uneven terrain, the wheels have they just totally bent up the whole bottom here. So this little piece of sheet metal is not enough to withstand all the force of these wheels being, you know, jarred all over the place. So I'm going to try and pop these wheels out, uh, pound back the steel to make it a little flatter, and maybe I can put some bigger washers, or maybe I can find some pieces of steel or something to put in between there to help distribute the load from those wheels. So we'll see how this goes. I just did these front ones for now to see how it works just some bigger three quarter inch uh, washers, fender washers on the outside here to hopefully make up more space or surface area that these things are able to be in contact with. And probably most importantly, it's touching out here now on the side panels where there's a lot more material, a little more thickness there. So this is kind of really hard to do unless you have giant long like orangutan arms because when you, <laughs> when, when you do the assembly for this, you attach the casters to this bottom plate before assembling the sides. Uh, it's almost impossible to hold the caster in place and reach inside to put the nuts on. So I really don't feel like doing these two. This took way too long and took way too much effort to do. <laughs> but these back ones don't be seem to be doing too badly. They are starting to tip a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this works. If these ones don't move from this point, then I'll change those ones out. Okay. <laughs> So the next thing on my mind is how to better utilize the space here for storage purposes. And one of the things I'm thinking about over here is the garden hose thing, the, uh, the extension cord I have for my welders, as well as the sawmill. The plug for this is behind the machine, which isn't too big of a deal, but this is kind of a big cord and I used to be able to store this on my welding cart that my old welder was on. Since I don't have that anymore, I don't have a good place to store this. And this gets kind of thrown on the floor and it's kind of annoying and it's pretty big and cumbersome. So I'm thinking since this whole area here is, you know, dead space essentially, why not make some kind of hanger so I can hang up my extension cord right on the dust collector and it's right here by the door still. So I can just bring it onto the driveway whenever I need to weld or run the mill. So on top of the machine, the impeller bolts on to the impeller housing with a few bolts all around here. I'm thinking I can use this bolt here to attach the little hook hanger thing. And I have this piece of square tube that I can actually make the hook out of. So I'll cut a piece that goes here that brings it out to the face of the machine, have a piece that drops down and they kind of make an L bracket kind of thing. And then I can weld like a little hook piece onto there to create the actual hook where the extension cord will go. So after a little bit of cleanup and paint, there's our bracket. I'm going to have to put some kind of spacer in here because I do have this lip between the plate and the top of the housing. I'm just going to get this kind of put in place here first. 
I think I should be able to just fill that gap with like a washer. So I honestly thought I had a game plan for some more storage ideas on here, but I got out here today and I was just kind of thinking and my plan kind of fell apart. So um, on the dust collector, we have these two vertical areas here, which could be used for hanging things and storing things on there. There's obviously space up top where I've stored a circular saw for now. And something I didn't even think about before is the area on top of the drum, the little flat area there. So it was my idea to come out here today and actually use the vertical spots here to mount the chargers for all my cordless tools. They can go right on there, you know, wherever. There's a couple of things to consider about this. On this side, you have the flapper handle, so you can't have something too thick until you get down to here. And then over here, I do need room to walk through here, so I wouldn't want anything super low on here. So, so what I've decided to do at least for now, is to use the area on top of the drum as just an area to store the chargers. There's power outlets, wow, there's power outlets behind the collector so I can place these chargers directly on here and they're kind of, they're out of the way and that space is a little more utilized. I think as I spend some time out here and I think about some more things to put in this area, you know, I'm thinking like the lesser used tools that don't need to be out by like the assembly table or by the dust extractor. So I was thinking maybe the big planer I could hang, you know, on here or something just to kind of get it up and out of the way and uh, utilize that space a little better. I think there's still a lot of potential here to do a lot of other things. Uh, one thing I also thought about was hanging just the big ruler I have right up here. There are these tapped holes here, which I'm not even sure what size they are. They're metric, so I have no idea uh, what they would be because I have no metric fasteners to try and thread in there. This is America. <laughs> so I could hang like a ruler here and I can use those tapped holes and it wouldn't interfere with the handle on here either. So I think, uh, you know, keep paying attention to what's going on back here over the next, I don't know, weeks or months. And I think you'll see some more things pop up to better utilize this space. So I thought I was going to have more. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, that's it for this one, I guess. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about the collector or anything in the shop or, you know, or what have you. Um, overall, it's been, it's been good, like I said, to have a, a, a collector that's actually sized correctly for the space. So regardless of the brand or the model, I think the biggest takeaway is what I've learned at least is that having an undersized collector is not fun. And although it's not always possible to go to something that's actually sized correctly for the shop space, when you get to that point, it's really nice to be able to be there and to realize, wow, what I had before is greatly undersized and it wasn't really doing me all that much good, except maybe getting rid of some of the big stuff. But anywho, that's about it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. And until next time. <laughs> Happy woodworking.